Howdy y'all, welcome back. Today we're going to discuss intelligence and the true nature of the old world. How tiptoeing the line between reality and a manufactured movement led to some awe-inspiring tales of what intrigued and sedated the world before the year 1900. Today, I'd like to share with you the story of Wolfgang von Kampelen, a Hungarian author and inventor. Let's begin with a little exercise. Let's say that you had a story that you needed to tell. You were tasked with this purpose. Except in this story, all you had were the greater pieces, the end results. What modern science tells us is perhaps reverse engineering could lead you to deduce how the pieces, the end results were created. But that isn't your job. Your job is to fabricate the story of where these great achievements came from. Imagine a world full of creations, but without creators. A world full of people without a purpose. A world full of endings without the stories told. And for lack of a better term, your job is to make it all make sense for a rapidly growing populace that begins to ask questions. The world before the year 1900 is full of massive achievements of engineering, construction, and architecture. The plain and simple of it is, for the most lavish structures around the world, the current narrative often does not do that creation justice. We have organizations, fraternal and governmental, which have purposefully infiltrated history and rewritten narratives. In modern times, we're told this is simply the rule that history is written by the victors. But realistically, many histories are littered with more plausible deniability and conjecture than anything that can be proven as fact. This is where we are today, at the bottom of the proverbial mud pit, trying to claw our way back to the top of the truth. This is the subject of today's video, Johann Wolfgang Ritter von Kompelen de Pazmin, better known as Wolfgang von Kompelen. He was a genius of his time, and according to his narrative and the few depictions of him that we have, he was of a swarthy complexion. He lived most of his life within the confines of the Greater Habsburg Empire. He was born in Pressburg, modern Bratislava, in the year of 1734, living to age 70 and passing in Vienna, Habsburg Empire, modern Austria. However, I'd like to browse further into the brief yet eccentric narrative regarding his achievements in life. We're told Wolfgang was one of the most gifted students in the Habsburg Empire, studying philosophy and law at Vienna followed by Rome, and Wolfgang spoke German, Hungarian, Slavic, Latin, French, Italian, Romanian, and English. In 1755, at age 21, Wolfgang applied and was granted his first job in the Habsburg Royal Court, serving as a clerk. He would move up in the ranks, ending his career as the Imperial Royal Court Counselor by 1787. However, it was the extracurricular activities of Wolfgang which seemed to indicate his true meaning within the old world narrative. In the year 1769, Wolfgang invented the Mechanical Turk, also known as the Great Automaton Chess Player. The Automaton was said to be able to play a winning game of chess against any opponent and could even complete the knight's tour involving moving a knight to occupy every square on the board exactly once. The Mechanical Turk Automaton toured the world for 84 years, never being beaten once. What's further, we're told this Automaton did battle with the greatest minds in the world, including Napoleon Bonaparte and Benjamin Franklin, easily beating both of them. This is why this narrative is so striking for me. We have modern interpretations of these old world narratives that are considered to be important. Take for example, the new Franklin TV show on Apple TV, which I did not enjoy, or even the recent movie Napoleon. These modern interpretations of old world narratives do not, and I don't believe they will ever, be able to grasp the tone of the world before the year 1900. Yes, these men have aggressive narratives told about them where they conquer, they invent, etc. But at the same time, both Franklin and Napoleon, as did everyone else in the world at that time, believed an actual, living, thinking automaton existed and somehow was imbued with the power to be able to beat them in chess. 
That's what grinds my gears. In the old world, it was dotted by so much unknown, which helped shape the inherited buildings and the inherited technology, which was brought forth from the undocumented escapades of the conquerors. It wasn't just this automaton. We have thousands of unique and undescribable inventions and creations before the year 1900, which only amounted to mystery. The world itself back then was full of mystery, full of intrigue. Almost every avenue still felt like the unknown. And even with meticulous scrutinizing, many of the greatest inventions that are discredited today, including the Mechanical Turk Automaton, somehow passed through society as creations which went against the nature of the world. We have full-scale reports from the late 1700s and the early 1800s with detailed blueprints of the automaton, and still, no one was able to discover that this was a hoax. It wasn't until that same sweet spot in our timeline, seemingly when all the truths of the world were revealed, roughly the mid-1800s, that the automaton chess player was proven to be a hoax. At the same time as the Industrial Revolution, the advent of photography, the revolutions around the world bringing end to the feudal systems, the handling of slaves and the ending of that practice, the orphan trains, the conquering of Western America, the bringing of rail lines and telegraph lines to interconnect the world and make the narrative uniform. When all of this was occurring, we also have hundreds of ancient and old world technological advancements being labeled as hoaxes, disproven, or the scientific community would go to work hand in hand with the history community to rewrite the purpose of this technology. The Automaton Turk was a life-size model of a Turkish man dressed as a quote, sorcerer, according to Wolfgang. In its left arm, he held a long Ottoman pipe, while its right lay on top of a large cabinet that measured just 3.5 feet long, 2 feet wide, and 2.5 feet high. The interior of the machine was also very complicated and designed to mislead those who observed it. When it was open to the left, the front doors of the cabinet exposed a number of gears and cogs, similar to advanced clockwork. Was this truly a piece of Antiquatech? The cabinet of the machine was literally so small that the next part of the description becomes hard to fathom. We're told essentially a human would hide inside the automaton, sliding between hidden compartments inside as to not be exposed if anyone decided to look inside the machine. Neither the clockwork visible to the left side of the machine nor the drawer that housed the chest set extended fully to the rear of the cabinet. We're told instead they only went about one third of the way. A sliding seat was installed, allowing the operator inside to slide from place to place and thus evade observation as the presenter opened various doors. Again, the cabinet was only three and a half feet by two feet by two and a half feet. So how is this description possible? As a further means of misdirection, the automaton came with a small wooden coffin-like box that the presenter would place on top of the cabinet, claiming it gave the automaton its power. Compellan often peered inside the coffin during play, suggesting that this coffin controlled some aspect of the machine. Again, the inside of the machine didn't have electricity. There was no light. So we're told in this tiny, minuscule box, a full-size adult not only hid and operated the entire automaton, but also was guided through his movement by candlelight since we're told that's the only light that they had available back then. Further adding to the ridiculous narrative, we're told the automaton eventually had a voice box installed, allowing for a clockwork type sound to be played when the Turk made a move and eventually allowing the Turk's voice box to exclaim check in French. Again, how would this be possible in the pre-electricity world? This leads us to another one of Wolfgang's inventions, gifts to the world. Wolfgang von Compellen actually was said to have invented the world's first talking machine in roughly the same year as the automaton, 1769. Although it took him over 30 years of tinkering before this voice box machine would be perfected. 
Essentially, without waxing too poetic on the details, Wolfgang created the world's first machine that could recreate speech. It was a human voice box. A kitchen bellow used to stoke fires and wood-burning stoves was invoked as the set of lungs to supply the airflow. A reed extracted from a common bagpipe was implemented as the gloides, the source of the raw, fundamental sound in the vocal tract. The machine consisted of the bellow, the reed, and a simulated mouth made of India rubber, which better created vowel sounds, and also included a throat to which a nasal cavity was attached, complete with two nostrils for pronouncing nasal consonants, as well as several levers and tubes to change pitch and frequency. Eventually, all of this was attached and hidden inside the automaton turret. Wolfgang von Capellen passed away just a few short months after the completion of his talking machine. However, also in his narrative, Wolfgang was credited with the inheriting of the Buddha castle of what is modern Budapest and transforming it into a university. Wolfgang also was in charge of building the court theater in Buddha. While all of this was occurring, he also patented steam engines and built a steam turbine for operating factories and mills. This all occurred in the late 1700s. Wolfgang built the pontoon bridge in Pressburg in 1770, and he created a typewriter for the blind for a personal friend of Mozart in the year 1779. He built his own massive mansion in Buda and constructed famous landscape structures throughout the greater Vienna area. Essentially, this swarthy Hungarian from the Habsburg Empire was one of the smartest and most meticulous men of his time period, a true genius of engineering who brought forth the machines that would become the Industrial Revolution. Or he was a charlatan, a hoax artist, who inherited technology and deceived his patrons, taking one ancient technology and being credited as its inventor. But what do you think? While the mechanical chess player is now considered to be a hoax, do you believe automatons like this could have truly existed? And if they did exist, like so many reports from before the year 1900 seem to indicate, could this be a wider response to the old world and to the previous society and the technology that was being inherited and trickled down to the rest of of the world. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Like, share this video where you can, and subscribe for more content. I'll see you on the next one.